We all spend roughly a third of our lives asleep, accessing dream worlds in our subconscious that are lost by the time we wake up. But what if they didn't have to be? What about if we could modify sleep stages, or how about if we could guide dreams, improving our well-being, using it for learning, or solve things related with biases or anxiety, so how we can create technologies that can deal with that. Judith Amores and the engineers, neuroscientists, and designers she works with at MIT's Media Lab, dubbed the Dream Team, are working to decode the unconscious mind. But these are no ordinary sleep scientists. They don't just want to understand the role that sleep and dreams can play in our lives. They think we can actually tinker with it. Dreams are kind of our own virtual reality. It's very interesting how some people have been applying that for things related with traumas or phobias because you can actually fight against those in a dream because you know it's not real, but still it's having an effect on you. Sleep has long been recognized not only for being therapeutic, but also a source of inspiration. Visionaries like Nikola Tesla have used hypnagogia, the state of being half asleep, to doze their way to some of the world's most iconic art and inventions. Hypnagogia has been associated to creativity and also problem solving. For example, Salvador Dali used to have these crazy surrealism paintings, beautiful. So he actually used this state as an inspiration. Thomas Edison as well. I think the, the song Yesterday by the Beatles was also created in a dream. To harness this potential, the Dream Team is exploring the world of human-machine symbiosis, that is, designing technology intended for seamless integration into your life and your body. And if that sounds straight out of sci-fi, it is. The Dream Team recently debuted Dormio, a glove designed to boost creativity. Dormio recognizes a hypnagogic state, triggers a robotic voice to read you an audio cue or creative prompt in your sleep, and records your mumbled response. It started as a, actually as a glove, like quick hack with a, a capacitive sensor that would detect when you're like falling into Nagoya. Then like they added more sensors to really make it more accurate and more beautiful as well. So it, it was not a glove anymore, but it was more like a really cool kind of sci-fi neon style finger worn device. But what about our sleep states beyond hypnagogia? The Dream Team is developing additional prototypes to analyze even more of your body's biological cues. A deep learning computer model then deciphers this information to determine what stage of sleep a person is in. So REM is REM, which is rapid eye movement. And then that's like the typical one where you have vivid dreams like movie kind of dream, you can actually be aware that that's a dream and then it's what some people call lucid dreaming. The non-REM, we can separate that in three sleep stages, and one and two and three. And three, it's particularly one that I'm very interested in because it's associated with memory consolidation. Targeting one or more of these sleep stages could be like finding the secret entrance to your own subconscious. The challenge is actually opening that door without waking you up. So the Dream Team is on the hunt for signals or stimuli that can do just that. And Judith has sniffed out a particularly useful tool, our sense of smell. The sense of a smell is directly connected to the two parts of the brain that are connected to the memory and the emotional systems. This is the bioessence or also essence device. So it's a wearable device that you can use it as a brush or you can also use it as a clip. Uh, we have a transformer, a Bluetooth, and microcontroller. We have these bottles that have a cotton filter inside, and then these discs here vibrate at high frequency. In this case, we have rose dragons. During your sleep, this device would be programmed to release a scent familiar to you that you've already associated with a learned behavior, such as smelling a rose while you study a new language. By nature, sleep uh, is a state that helps us with memory consolidation. To trigger certain stimuli, it could be sound or it could be smell. You trigger that same stimuli while you're asleep. And then what happens is that you are strengthened that memory. The toys and tools dreamed up in the Media Lab are usually controlled by a simple smartphone app, making it easier for people to get the results they want, whether it's facing your fears in a dream, breaking a bad habit, or just getting a better night's rest. 
Most of the research that has been done in the past in terms of sleep was done in research labs. If you go to a sleep lab, they have the EEG that monitors brain activity, they have heart rate monitors, and so many different cables that sometimes it's also hard to fall asleep. So what we try to do is to get that amazing research that has been developed over the years and so trying to bring it in a more wearable manner with flexible materials, but also, of course, cheaper. And for Judith and her team, paving the way for that mutual symbiosis with technology is what the future is all about. To me, like the line between art and science is really blurry, and I really like to see that they are both merged. Technology should be more like a vitamin rather than a painkiller, something that can enhance us, that can help us, especially when we are talking about interfacing with unconscious mind. In the past, that has been used a lot for negative outcomes, for propaganda, for selling your stuff, for politics. We believe it's really important for users to give full control. How we can use that for positive outcomes, for really helping people to be a better version of themselves. For more episodes of Science in the Extremes, check out this one right here. Don't forget to subscribe and come back to Seeker for more episodes. Thanks for watching.